With the NBA Draft only a few days away, I thought it was the perfect time to finally release my mock draft. I was going to do this a while ago, but I thought maybe let's just wait a few days until the NBA Draft actually commences before we make the mock draft. Considering that there was going to be a lot of trade speculation, especially with the Anthony Davis trade saga. And obviously, I don't know, there could be a trade before the trade deadline, which changes everything. But as of now, this is my mock draft. As of the 18th of the 6th. 2019. Before we get started, be sure to let me know your mock draft down below in the comment section. And if you enjoy these types of videos and you want to see more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a like on this video so I can keep uploading them in the future. By the way, thank you for all your support recently. Videos have been uploading more regularly. You guys have been showing a lot of support, so it's all working out and I really, really thank you guys for that. Anyway, this is what I believe. It's pretty obvious, the first three picks. So we're going to get into that pretty quickly because we all kind of have the same top three, let's be honest. At number one, Zion Williamson. One of the best players that we've seen in a very long time. He has the potential to change the NBA as we know it. He averaged 22.6 points per game, 8.9 rebounds in 30 minutes as a freshman. He's going to be insane, and the Pelicans have a great future. Number two, Ja Moran. Conley will be used as a mentor for Ja Morant up until the trade deadline and then they'll probably ship him off to a contending team and the Grizzlies will probably get a future first round or something along the lines of that. But Morant, as of right now, 24.5 points, 10 assists, almost 6 rebounds per game as a sophomore. Obviously some of the passes he does, he's pretty risky. Evident through Morant having 5.2 turnovers per game. If you're going to compare him to anybody, he'd be like a young John Wall entering the league. John Wall, obviously turned it over like crazy. I think he led the league in turnovers when he entered the NBA. So Morant, he needs to work on his turnover ratio. But as of now, he's exciting. He's in the mold of a Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook, John Wall type of player. He's quick, can get to the hoop. And Morant has an actual decent jump shot as well. Number three, RJ Barrett. Basically, everybody thought that this time last year, Barrett was going to be a top two to number three pick. And that's where he fell. 22.6 points, 7.6 rebounds, 4.3 assists per game in 35 minutes. RJ Barrett seems like a great player to enter this draft. He'll look to be a go-to scorer in the NBA. I still think RJ Barrett will be an all-star, and I think he'll be a great player. But in my opinion, I just don't think he'll be as strong in the NBA as some of the other guys in this draft. But like I said, that's a risky pick to say, but I just see him as like a Jalen Brown, Brandon Ingram type player where he enters the league top three pick, but he just doesn't produce at the start. But who knows what he'll be? He could be better than anybody. That's just my opinion. At number four, with the New Orleans Pelicans now selecting at the fourth pick, my mock draft changed. Originally, when the Lakers had this fourth pick, I was actually considering the Lakers drafting Cam Reddish at four or Jarrett Culver. But now that the Pelicans are drafting at number four, I think they're going to go with DeAndre Hunter. Obviously, the Pelicans need a big man. That's their main primary focus, in my opinion, this upcoming free agency. And with a lot of big men in free agency, they have a few options to go to. If you want to see what I think they'll do in this year's free agency, you can click the video down below in the description box below. I made a what is next for the New Orleans Pelicans. But at this stage with the NBA draft, I think they'll go with DeAndre Hunter. He would fit pretty well with the New Orleans Pelicans. Obviously, they have a young core of Lonzo, Ingram, and Williamson. And they have potential trade assets in Drew Holiday who they can still keep on this team. There's a lot of ups and downs in what the Pelicans can do, but I think DeAndre Hunter is a guy that either you can keep, you can trade, and you can just see what happens in the future. The reason why I think the Pelicans will draft DeAndre Hunter is because obviously Ingram, Lonzo, Drew Holiday, and even a little bit of Zion Williamson demand the ball. They are ball dominant players. Not really Zion, but definitely Zoe, definitely Drew Holiday at times, and definitely even Brandon Ingram is a ball-dominant player. DeAndre Hunter isn't a ball-dominant player, and he seems like a type of player who can adapt to any role that is necessary for a team. And this is something, once again, is a little bit risky, but what's the point of making a mock draft if it's not a little bit risky and it's not your own opinion? So, if the Pelicans don't draft Hunter... Don't be surprised, in my opinion, if they trade down, collect more assets while maintaining a sold 4-10 pick in the draft, and then select a player like Bol Bol. Nobody knows if he'll be a good player in this draft, a bad player in this draft, an average player in this draft, a guy with potential in this draft. Nobody really knows what Bol Bol is. So Bol Bol could be a guy that the Pelicans may look to go to considering they need a center. They do have this draft pick, which they can acquire more assets from as well as Bol Bol. But back on Hunter, he has a 6'7 wingspan, B can guard multiple positions, and C, he shot 43.8% from three-point range, which is really, really good, leading Virginia to the national championship. During the national championship, 
championship, Hunter not only led Virginia to the title, but he also outplayed Culver, dropping 27 on his head, while Culver had a disappointing 15. Number 5, Jared Culver. I think he'll be going to the Cleveland Cavaliers. He averaged 18.5 points, 6.7 rebounds, and 3.7 assists in 32 and a half minutes per contest this season, whilst helping Texas advance to the championship game of the NCAA tournament. Now, in saying that, I do think Culver could even go forward to the Pelicans and Hunt could go far to the Cavaliers, but that is just a swap and pick there. That is my opinion, and that's who I think the Cavaliers will draft. Number six, Darius Garland to the Phoenix Suns. Last year's number one overall pick, DeAndre Ayton, is on record saying that the Phoenix Suns need a point guard. And whilst they tried Devin Booker this year to run the one, obviously they want to run him at the two for the rest of his NBA career. The thing about this though is the Suns surprisingly have a potential chance to land a free Asian point guard, whether that be a guy like Terry Rozier or an even better player in a guy like D'Angelo Russell. Remember, Booker and Russell are great friends, number one. They would then have a potential chance to sign a guy like Carl Anthony Towns, who is also a great friend of Russell and Devin Booker, and that could be a future big three with DeAndre Aiden, and if they can draft a guy like Darius Garland, look out. But in saying that, let's just look at what the Phoenix Suns have right now, and right now, they need a point guard. And Darius Garland is a great point guard at least from what we've seen. Obviously, he wasn't in the ideal situation because he did get hurt, and he only appeared in five games before having knee surgery. He averaged 16.2 points, 3.8 rebounds, and 2.6 assists, while shooting 53.7% from the field and 47.8% from three-point range. He's great with the ball, he's a tremendous shooter, and if he develops into an all-star, it definitely would not surprise me. His game is somewhat similar to Damian Lillard with his shot-creating ability, and I think he'd be a perfect fit on the Phoenix Suns. But if they don't go there, it wouldn't surprise me if they went for a guy like Kobe White, as a safer option, considering that Garland only played in five games this season. Speaking of Kobe White, at number seven, I think the Chicago Bulls select Kobe White. Obviously, they need a point guard. Yes, they do have Chris Dunn, but they don't seem too settled with Chris Dunn. I think this is one of the most clear-cut players who will be drafted at seven if he doesn't get taken higher. Number eight, Cam Reddish to the Atlanta Hawks. I think, in my opinion, Cam Reddish will be the second greatest player in this year's NBA draft. I'm so high on Cam Reddish, but the thing is, I have him at eight, and personally, that's just because I don't think teams will try and target him earlier than eight. I just don't really think so. With that, the Atlanta Hawks are looking amazing. Not only do they have the eighth pick, but they have the tenth pick. Not only do they have Trey Young, they have John Collins. Not to mention, even Kevin Herter is a decent shooter, and he's a guy that seems like he could be a great six man, and if he even improves, a decent three-point shooter as a starting player in this league. But anyway, let's talk about Cam Reddish. So alongside Trey Young, John Collins, Kevin Herter, Reddish seems like a great fit for this team. He would benefit from playing alongside a guy like Trey Young, who gets his teammate involved, and he'd be able to spend his opening years working as a better three-point shooter. He also was the third option at Duke alongside RJ and Zion, and therefore Cam was obviously going to have a lesser role in this big three, which means averaging 13.5 points, four rebounds, and two assists as the third option is not actually that bad. I think he should be a top six pick, and had a guy like RJ not been on this team and it was just Zion and Reddish, I think he would have been, but that's just my opinion. At number nine, I think the Washington Wizards select, and I'm going to struggle with this, but I know who he is, the French guy, Sekou Domboya. I think that's how you say his name, but anyway, he'll be the first non-college player selected in this draft, and the reason why is of his potential. He's a six foot nine forward who was raised in France, and he didn't turn 18 until last December, which makes him the youngest projected first round pick available. Obviously, not being a college player, being an international player, being a good athlete, a good defensive player, and a guy that couldn't really shoot. Although Domboya actually surprised a lot of teams, and he's actually hitting a lot of his shots at the pre-draft workouts. He's a good athlete who can run the floor and play above the rim whilst guarding multiple positions. Whilst I don't know much about him, I know he's sounding a lot like Pascal Siakam, and we know how that turned out for the Toronto Raptors. He obviously played in France, meaning that when you play international, your minutes get cut a little bit, and it's basically your potential that will get you drafted. He only averaged 7 points and 3 rebounds, so does he seem good? Not really, but it's the potential. And in the NBA, a guy with potential is a guy that you could draft. With the Washington Wizards selecting him, I'm not sure if that is the best team for him to be selected to, but we'll see what happens. Number 10, Bol Bol. 
Considering your seventh overall pick, if you're the Atlanta Hawks, is your main and prized possession, why not take a risk? If Domboya is still there, I wouldn't be surprised if they pick him, but if he isn't, Bol Bol is the guy that you have to take a risk on in my opinion if you're the Atlanta Hawks. Number one, they need a center. Number two, he's one of the most unique and one of the highest potential players in this year's draft. Whilst he's not as quite as tall as his father, the iconic Manute Bol, he is still seven foot two. So he's very tall and a guy who can space the floor, shoot threes, pick and pop, play defense, and what's crazy is that he shot 52% of his three-point attempts as a freshman at Oregon, which suggests that he could be a guy over seven feet tall to be a weapon from the three-point line. And if you pair that up with Trey Young, John Collins, and even Cam Reddish, that could be insane for the Atlanta Hawks. And that's just good news. The bad news is that he suffered a foot injury, and this could be a scary thing in the NBA. When you start getting one injury here and there, it can lead to two to three, and you may, you know, see another big man go down the wrong path. He's actually a very similar player to Kristaps Porzingis, and I like Porzingis when he was picked by the New York Knicks. There are many questions yet to be answered. Personally, he's 21 points and 9.6 rebounds with one assist shooting 50% from three while providing 2.7 blocks says it all. I seriously don't understand why people aren't taking Bobo more seriously. Maybe it is because his name is Bobo. I don't know. But the fact that Darius Garland only played five games, although he is predicted to go top six, people have Bobo going late in the first round, top 20. I just think he is a guy that needs to be rated highly. And also, if he can put on some size, watch out. And if teams are scared of him, please, Miami, take the man. We need him. Forget Whiteside, forget Adebayo, take Bol Bol. I'm serious. Number 11, Romeo Langford. The thing about Romeo Langford is I think he'll be the best player available and the better fit for the Minnesota Timberwolves when they pick at number 11. Obviously, they can draft a guy like Jackson Hayes, but they do already have Towns. They can draft a guy like Rui Hachimura, but I just don't think he'll be a great player when, once again, you have Towns on this team. So, Romeo Langford seems like the better option. I just don't know if he'll be a great fit in the NBA. He averaged 16.5 points, 5.5 rebounds, 2.3 assists in 34 minutes. So, he is a former five-star recruit, which still remains as an intriguing prospect, but I just don't know how good he'll be in the NBA. Number 12, Jackson Hayes to the Hornets. I just think if you're the Charlotte Hornets and you need a center, he'd be the best center available at this point. If Bobo isn't taken, I think Jackson Hayes is just a guy that will be there, play his role and do his job, but he won't be a standout in this league. Number 13, the Miami Heat. I think they select Rui Hachimura if he's there at number 13. And as a Heat fan, I would take that. The Heat are in a weird situation. We have a lot of guys on a lot of hefty contracts, but in only two years, they could be all off. We could have Josh Richardson, Justice Winslow, Bam Adebayo, and another future piece to add to that young core. Well, Jay Rich isn't too young, and neither is Winslow or Adebayo, but they're young enough to have a young core. And Rui Hachimura could fit. Stretch force who can guard in space and constantly make three points are more preferable now. And that is great news for Miami and great news for Hachimura. Obviously, if they do draft a guy like Hachimura, it means that Bam Adebayo would play the five, and hopefully you could trade Hassan Whiteside for a few potential first round picks. Anyway, he's a six foot eight forward from Gonzaga who averaged almost 20 points, six and a half rebounds, shooting 41% beyond the arc, which is great for the Miami Heat as they need more three point shooting. He can punish smaller opponents around the rim, exploit bigger opponents on the perimeter, similar to the way that Thaddeus Young has been doing it in the NBA for more than a decade. And if you know me and you've known my channel for a long time, you know I love Thaddeus Young. And I think Rui Hachimura has a lot of potential and could be a great fit for the Heat if they are able to draft him and if he falls to that pick. If they don't, I think the Miami Heat will select a guy like Bol Bol if he's available, or they'll probably select a guy like Romeo Langford if he's still there. Or even a guy like Nas Reed or Nazir Little, I wouldn't even be surprised. At number 14, the Boston Celtics select Alexander Walker. I don't know too much about him, but what I will say is that he looks like a decent player. For the Boston Celtics, I don't know what they're looking to do considering they may lose Kyrie and they may just have to build what they have with their young core with Tatum and Brown. And this guy could be a good fit to build up with those guys. Alexander Walker is a six foot five guard capable of playing on or off the ball and guarding at least three positions with his height. And when you think about it, Boston need a guy like this considering they may lose Rosier, may lose Kyrie, and they may just look to the future. 
With that said, I have some honorable mentions. Nas Reed, Brandon Clark, and Nazir Little, I think could definitely fall into the lottery, and I think they could be drafted by any team in the lottery, honestly. That's what I believe, and that's my mock draft. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button for more. Follow me on Instagram, leave a like if you enjoy the video, and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Comment down below your mock draft in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys in my next one. I am out.